In today's video, we will be looking at North Star and a new ruler. Let's get started. Well, can you believe it? When we started this journey, did we have any idea how much fun we were going to have? And I'm telling you, we continue to talk about how wonderful all of your blocks are and how thrilled we are that you share them, that you're supportive of your of the other quilters and commenting and that sort of thing. And it's been a great journey for us for sure. Today we're going to be looking at North Star and let me tell you, I left it at the end because it's really not that complicated, but what it is, is precision. And where you have um, a four or five inch unit, you have a little bit of forgiveness if you make a mistake. But when we start talking cutting in sixteenths, there's zero forgiveness. But I've figured out a way to do it, so I'm gonna share with you a little tip. The North Star block is on page 11 in your book. If you're using AccuQuilt, this is one of those chances where you will be able to use your nine inch cube. Your A would be die six, your B would be die five, and C would be die four. So if you are working traditional, you will be using everything that is in your pattern. But if you're using specialty rulers, I would cut the A three and three quarter. Your B would be two and three quarter inch strip and you would use your half square triangle ruler. Your C would be a two and three quarter inch strip and you would use your quarter square ruler. And then your F would be a four and a quarter inch strip, again, with your half square ruler. But one of the confusing things about this block, it's not an equal division block. And you know, we've been working with tic-tac-toe boards so that the corner square was the same size as the middle square. That is not the case in this block because these corners finish three and three quarter inches. But this center element finished as three and three quarter by four and a half. So it really is a little bit of a rectangle, meaning that that center unit is going to finish the width of this unit. So I think where people get a little confused with this block is you keep trying to make the math be equal like a tic-tac-toe board. It isn't. Anytime these feathers come into play, you will always encounter, well, I shouldn't say always, but mostly you will encounter where the numbers are not the same. So I can easily use my half square triangle ruler to cut all of this, but this math gets a little squirrely in there. Now here is the element we're going to be working on. The corners I shouldn't have to address with you at all anymore. These are just half square triangles. The little red units are also half square triangles, as are the white ones. But this little corner square, when, when you have to cut things that are seven eighths, then what you need to do is adhere to that. Once you're sewing these, the key you want to look for for this to fit, and I've talked to some of you who have made this, who are encountering it being off a little, and you've just got to watch these two triangles come to a point this middle triangle has got the quarter inch seam allowance. So when you sew this unit, this is kind of what you're looking for. And it is a little deceiving when you have a pure point and it drops down like that. So what you're going to do is sew a set of half square triangles, another set, put those two together, put a, another single red on, then you'll put this quarter square unit on here because right here's my straight of grain. So this is really the goose. This is really a flying geese unit. Then I'll do the same set here. I will put another end on and this one gets a square and then I will join that. And then I put my half square triangles on right there. And then I put these fellows on. I will tell you in the book, 
It tells you to cut one size for that center A. It's a true 11 sixteenths. I don't even know where that is. I know it's probably between 10 and 12, but it's not easy to find, folks, unless you've got a great ruler. These rulers that I work with do have, all the good measure rulers have that specific 16th inch line. I have found that that is one case that I do cut up a 16th. And I always say to you, you know, a 16th and an eighth matters. Play with it and see how it works for you. But I have found that I can, I can cut the 11 sixteenths. But all I have to do is go up a 16th and I can do the next mark. And then when I join it, it tends to be a little easier to me. And I know this is conflicting information for what I have said before. But I think feathers, anytime you're working on feathered stars and things like that, the job at hand sometimes does need another task. And I find that this makes my work a little bit easier and a little bit cleaner, but this is one you're just going to have to play with. And many of you have told me, well, I'll be skipping that block. Now, I've already completed my black quilt, so this one doesn't have a home in the quilt, but I am going to use it in something. I'm just not clear what at this point. When I had all my 30s blocks on the wall and was ready to set the quilt, I thought, wait a minute. Why don't I do something entirely different so you get to see another setting option? So I decided to do a strippy. Now I had to do a, a little reconnoitering when I did this. My first and my last row, I used the 12 inch block. So I used eight of the 12 inch blocks and I turned them on point for the two side rows. Then when it came time for the middle row, I already had two 14 inch blocks made, which were part of the program. And I thought, wait a minute, I think I'm going to set the center row straight. So what I did was I took two 14s and then I took my 12, brought it up to 14. So you'll see framing around the, some of the blocks so it didn't matter if it was a 12 inch block and I put a frame on it and made it a 14. It could have been a 10 inch block that I put a frame on and made it a 14. So my center blocks are all 14 and the only spacers and fillers I used on this quilt were the little one by four segments. So if you look, there are three of those that live in that middle row that gave me another 12 inches in length. So my center row would be four times 14 and three times four, because I had three four inch elements and four 14 inch elements. The math was perfect because when you take a 12 inch block and turn it on point, it now becomes a 17 inch block. So that means my first and my last row are four times 17. So if you do four times 17, that's how you'll know what size you have to make the middle be. In the event that you said, I don't wanna use those same fillers you used, it wouldn't matter. Measure what your four straight set blocks are going to be subtract that amount from four times 17, which is what your row one and row three are, and then come up with what your filler strips are. I love the way it turned out, and I played with this for a couple of days, deciding whether how I was gonna frame that middle row, so I just put two pieces on the middle row to separate it and kind of let it stand out a little bit, and then I dug in my stash, and that border that's on this quilt, I've used in the last six months, probably on two or three different quilts. <laughs> it is at least 25 years old out of my stash. So it was perfect because I thought it highlighted all the colors that lived in it. And I tried different piecing. And you know, sometimes your quilt's just going to say quit. And this one did. Sew this, Kay, and, and quit. Many of you have perhaps never looked at or done a, a diagonal set. 
your row one and row three are like table runners, like if you want to turn a block on point. But anytime you do a diagonal set quilt, the real culprit for people is, how on earth am I going to cut those sides? Well, traditional math is a real simple little thing. You just need the diagonal. The best math for calculating a side set triangle unit is the diagonal of the block. And in this case, you know that my 12s are, are 17 inches on point. Add two inches, cut a square, and cross cut it twice because that is a, a quarter square triangle. And that works, and I've used it for years and years and years, but sometimes it's real difficult to take a 19 inch block and cut it on diagonal twice and keep those precise. So along comes one of my most used tools in this collection is the side set triangle ruler, which I have laying on the table. And I felt like I had to introduce you to this. So many of you who are new especially may have never done a diagonal set. And one of the best ways to practice is do a table runner. Now we've done a video on this tool, how to use it and the whole nine yards. And we are linking that so that you'll be able to find it. The ruler has two sets of markings on it. And it is the only ruler in the collection that pink and green lines don't mean anything. Because on this ruler, they're just markings. They're not precise like they are on the others where your pink lines are quarter and three quarter and your green lines are halves and holes. In this case, they're just markings. On the left side, it has one set of writing and on the right side, it has another set. Over here, it says block finished size. And I pretend it's saying, okay, what size does your block finish? So let's just say my block finished nine. Now that means it's going to be nine and a half on the table. I would go to that number and I would trail over to my left to where it said cut strip width and I would cut that strip 7.25. This tool then would, when I sandwich it in, and once you watch that video, this is real clear. When I sandwich it in on the fabric, it sits like my very first cut would give me a corner, which would be a half square triangle. And then the next cut would give me my quarter square triangle. I get all of it out of the same size strip. And this really comes in handy when I can work east and west, on, especially on things that are um, like a stripe or a, a toile, something that is a scenic where I can control the direction of things. I use it for everything that I do, every table runner, anytime I put a block on point. Let's just say you didn't own the large half square triangle ruler and we were putting the corners on our blocks to frame them up to the 14s. I could have used this tool because it has all my north-south lines and all my diagonal lines on it. It is my go-to ruler when it comes to squaring the corners of a quilt, like when it comes back from the quilter. And in case y'all don't know, I don't quilt, I, I, I quilt by check. So when it comes back from the quilter, what I can do is by turning this tool over, I don't care anything about lines now. I just love that I have this long, 90 degree corner and side, and then my diagonal lines will slot themselves in on those inserts I have done, which lets me do that cleaning up. And this is also the only ruler in the collection that oversizes. So when you are finished with a diagonal set, like my row one and row three, when I finished, I went back and cleaned up everything right to the quarter of an inch. Do I know how to do it precise? Of course I do, but anytime you're setting on diagonal, I'm telling you there is just a plethora of things that can go south. I have found that this gives me an, an absolute spot on finished quilt. And if you've made diagonal sets in the past and struggled with them, where they cup in at the bottom or cup out, it typically is that side set unit. Hopefully this will be a tool that you'll find will really complement all of the others in your library of tools. We, we knew today would be a little short and sweet, 
because we only had one block and my quilt's already done. So I've finished my black one, my blue one, and my 30s, and I know many of you are working on the second quilt. Some of you have already posted your finished first quilts, and I'm delighted to see those. Be sure that you continue to click subscribe, like all of this, do all of that, because honestly, if you do that, you will be made aware of anything that we're doing in the future. And be sure and, and add comments on the video. Let us know things you like and things you'd like for us to do in the future. We see a little break in things. It looks like we're beginning to open up. And oh man, I don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna, the first thing I'm going to do when it's safe is get a haircut. Then the next thing I'm going to do is get a manicure. And then, I don't know, I might go out and get a milkshake or something. I'm not real sure what I'm going to do. Because I'm telling you, my animals are beginning to speak that I should go back to the house. Because I'm spending a little bit too much time with them, and I'm talking to them just like I'm talking to you. And one of the goats said to me the other day, go to the house. And so, so that tells me it is time to wrap this up, folks. Thank you so much for this journey. We have enjoyed it immensely. We appreciate all your kind comments. We appreciate your supporting our little business. We sure hope you've had fun on Patchwork Staycation and we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye-bye. Check, check, check. Yeah, but I'd just as soon do it this way. Right, and no, that doesn't work. Well. Let's get started. Try that again. In today! <laughs> you don't want to put that at the end. Okay. In. <laughs> <laughs>